Hello, welcome back. Last time I did the first few rooms of my second level and was shown why this room is actually harder than I thought it was when I was building it. I think I made a couple of incorrect observations about this secret access. Um, I think it's both accessible after the room is cleared and also I can clear the room after getting in here and also get into the secret entrance. I'll test that once I get back from it. And I will have to actually properly clear that room over there. But let's do the secret um, now. So this room right here was one of the last rooms built for this hold actually. Because there was another completely different room here that uh, just really did not work out. It was a long magic move sequence about gentry I chain shortening. And I thought it was clever when I built it, but then after letting it sit for like a couple of months, um, when I came back to it, nothing about the way going through it made any sense. Uh, no tester ever seemed to have a good time in it, so I just decided, well, that room was no good. Let's throw it away and build another one. So that's kind of the benefit of like leaving a hold for a little while. When a room gets a chance to age, and my memory of it fades a little bit, uh, then I can come in with a fresh perspective, try it again, and see what worked about it and what didn't. Sometimes the entire thing just needs to be thrown out. I wonder if this spot is special or if that's just... I think... Looking at this, for one thing, it's nice to have it there for symmetry. I think this spot is not special, it's just an aside so that you can choose whether to step on this checkpoint or not as you go around here. There's going to be some circling around the outside, right, so what's actually in this room? Uh, this version. So we got a bomb here on a east-facing force arrow. One wraith wing, briar root gentry eye, and this weird little skating rink over here. Oh right, this room was... Uh, was in a discussion recently having to do with the behavior of bridges surrounded by thin ice over shallows. Uh, we'll see why... well, I'll talk more about why when I show what the role of that is. So Wraithwing's the only monster here we have to kill. Blow it up, right? Well, it's too far away. So, uh, and yeah, I can't convince it to be closer while I'm at that bomb. Even if my sword is, like, at the optimal position. Yeah, no cheating that. And underneath the wraith wing is a pressure plate which closes that door, only while it's continuously held though, uh, protecting it if anything is here, and thin ice over deep water. Alright, I'm pretty sure I remember what the purpose of all these elements is. So, how do we kill the wraith wing? Can I go in here myself? No, because there's an active fire trap with nothing that's ever going to turn it off. And even, I can see this without even clicking on the fire trap. Well, I can barely see the fire trap is there. But without even clicking it, I know that any mechanism wired to a force arrow over a fire trap or door tile, will the force arrow will take priority and toggle... Or is it the other way around? Let me make sure I'm saying the right thing here. Um, okay, this is nothing. It's completely fine to show this. This is a, uh, a failed experiment in a hold that I was going to build at one point, but that went nowhere. Uh, where's my testing area? How do I... It's been like a long time since I've done this. Wow. I wonder what this was. What hold was I working on when I made this arrangement? It doesn't matter. Uh, all I want to do is... Put down a fire trap. Let's make it an active one, just for just to match. That was what a west-facing force arrow. Again, doesn't matter, but just to match. And then an orb which toggles this. We'll do what? Uh. Oh, I see. I'm. Uh... Okay, I have to discard to play the room. Okay, well. I'm on a different player profile here. Um, I guess I can't easily test that right now. <laughs> I want to. All right, let's make a modifiable copy then. Or I could change player profiles. Let's do that. Uh, oops, no, no, go back. Hey, that screen came in handy for once. I didn't want to quit. All right, so I'm me. Blind race number three. Oh, geez. <laughs> Things are weird. Okay, yeah, so this is black text now, meaning I own the hold. So much work, just to test this one little thing. Uh, uh, it remembered the orientation of that. So that persists in memory. And wire to this. 
The answer is it does toggle the fire trap and not the force arrow, so it was the opposite way around, as I said. Okay, so it could potentially be relevant uh, to be able to turn off that fire trap. All right, I'm glad I checked. So anyway, but if I click this, I see that nothing lights up. <laughs> so there is no mechanism that turns that off. Uh, yeah, so these, the fire traps here and here. Oh, I put little orange lights under them because this room is slightly darkened. Red lights under the hot tile. Uh, I think that's the only lighting. Oh, and this lamppost and this one, sure. I think there's a little blue glow around the ice just to kind of emphasize it. Uh, anyway, yeah, so the fire traps there exist to be gentry eye only mechanisms because they can freely go through those, but Bithra cannot. Okay, so um, I guess really you have to observe the end state before doing anything of any use over here. You can look at mechanisms, sure. So let's see what the mechanisms do. Okay, so there's a briar root with um, broken walls indicating that I probably want to break these and open this and leave this open in order for the briar to grow over that because that's something good. Yeah, that's the only way this door opens to get access to the Wraithwing chamber and the only way this opens to get access to the ice rink. Uh, but these need to be in a specific state to do that and the gentry eye is the one that gets to interact with them. Okay, so there's like a lot of intertwined mechanisms. Also, I have to have this held for Bethro to get in here and grow the briars. So that seems like a good first step. Let's get this held down. Can I just do that with the gentry eye? Well, if I go down here like this, you end up there with that door closed and now you're permanently stuck. So nothing can ever release you unless I do this. So I'm wrong, I can release you. Neat. Uh, you gonna stay there for long enough? You are. Okay, well, I found a way to stably hold this down. Just purely by accident. I think I want to cut in this order, such that I can escape. Let's see what happens if I do it the other way. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> Alright, so I do this once. Spryer is grown. None of these plates make permanent state changes, right? That's a toggle, that's a toggle, that's a toggle, that's a toggle. So no, you can go around the loop as many times as you want. Now if I go here, I get eaten. Uh, I don't think I can reinsert you in there from this way around. All right, oh shoot, okay. I think what I did there was actually a problem then. Unless I can maybe, okay, I can do that. Go one further, get trapped on the arrow, and let's go for another loop. And sure, let's use this checkpoint aside. Hold on, Bithra, just zooming ahead, not thinking about anything. So from here, I could go over to this side. So what do I desire? One of these plates down, this plate up. Uh, the layout of this is interesting. So I observe that I can go this far and turn around and move the gentry eye laterally like that. Maybe that means something. What if I do that here? Will that be beneficial to me? It might. I think that'll just grow the briar. It should have time, right? Oh, gentry eyes chained up. That's fine. Briar grows. Okay, oh, that was simpler than I thought. Um, I think I just lucked into that first arrangement real easily. Anyway, so right, end state. Um, now that I have opened up all my possibilities, uh, the observation that needs to be made is the way to kill this wraithwing is to have a gentry eye head here with no chain attached. Uh, because if the chain is attached, then the Wraithwing is protected from the bomb. But I do need to have something blocking the Wraithwing coming toward me to keep it close enough to the bomb. So what I need to do is detach the chain from this gentry eye. And the way you do that is using the ice. So let's see. How will this work exactly? It's over shallows, so I don't actually cut off any B-throw traversability by doing this. So bridges drop when all the orthogonal things next to them go away. All right, so the... Right, so I need to sink the gentry eye chain in that deep water. A behavior change was being discussed for a future version of Drod, where um, if a bridge is surrounded by thin ice over shallows, it would actually drop into 
shallow water instead of deep water, and I'm using the behavior that this makes deep water in order to sink the gentry eye chain in it. In parallel, another change was discussed to make gentry eye sink in shallow water, which also would have actually been compatible with this. Because you can place them over shallow water, but they won't walk over it themselves. But if they're placed over it, they just sort of float on top and are fine. Um, so it makes some sense for, like, dropping in shallow water to trim the chain. So, like, there are two different... One possible interpretation of that change would not break this room. Although it would look different because this would turn into a shallow water tile instead of a deep one. Anyway. Uh, but in this version that I'm playing, 510, I guess it is. 511's coming. Drod is being actively developed. For the first time in a while, and it's nice. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I, I think it was decided that that behavior won't be changing, though. All right, so I need to carve a path in this that will let me drop, I guess, like one bit of ice for the trapdoor to go, or bridge to go away. Like, that's a, that's a minimalistic way to do it if I want to be on the east. Do I? I don't know yet. Um... It might be convenient. Hmm. I think I see what would be most convenient here. So let's drop these this way. Actually, this way. Yeah, I think that'll be good. And I can drop this one. It won't be involved. All right, so here's the plan. Gentry I goes on arrow. I go around. Gentry Eye comes to me and doesn't make it. Okay, so a better way to do that... No, that wouldn't work. Okay, so I'll have to reorient. Um, that's fine. Why is there no checkpoint? Oh, I guess there's one there. Yeah, that's close enough to that area. Uh, so if the Gentry Eye is coming from... So it's going to enter on this tile, go to this tile, go to this tile, and I want to drop that one in the final. So I want to make a Y shape. Okay. Sounds plausible. Oh, right. Yeah, the reason my other player profile was parked on that uh, Gentrady I set go blind race entry was specifically for looking into a, uh, a thing about this... Um, this behavior because that level had a room that had gentry eye pre-placed on shallow water and yeah you can clearly see he doesn't doesn't uh traverse to it okay so you're just ahead now and i'm gonna reinsert you here all right you're locked in wraithling moves away from me um okay had to do that a little differently uh this is fine you stay there Wraithwing gets chased away. That way you're already on the door once it closes. Then it'll reopen, Gentry Eye head holds you in place, and kaboom. And as a bonus, the Gentry Eye dies. <laughs> the final step of the original room that was here. I could probably show that room, but it's like broken and super jank. Uh, I'll check the editor in a moment. Well, you know what? Let's do it now. Uh, let's see if this is possible okay so if i go to no i only have the current version of this hold here so no i can't never mind all right doesn't matter um maybe i'll dig up an old version and import it for next time just so we can uh so we can see that because it might be fun but i'm actually pretty happy with how that turn that room turned out um despite being a pretty late addition Okay, so when I enter from here, does this give me any advantages? I go see the Wubba, but then I'd be stuck. So, no. Um, and no, this hasn't made any meaningful state changes in the room, unless I want to, like, hook a monster around there and stash it. The goblin could plausibly be done like that. Uh, but I want to actually leave and reset the state of this. Okay, so I want a long monster chain. I need to kill... Omplik and Spider are kind of the tricky ones. I think I never end Seep. I think I never managed to actually kill the Omplik when I was uh, doing secret access here. Okay, so if I do this, I do get the Goblin. So before I do that, let me make sure my sword's like this to keep the Goblin off me. It'll have to actually be like this, and even that won't work fully. It kind of did. It did just fine, actually. 
Okay, I got the goblin and the roach. Gentry Eye was going in there. I think I don't want it to. Uh, my sword's facing a real bad direction. The direction that it was facing became a better direction. Okay, so I think I might be able to kill the spider here. Oh, yes, I can. Neat. And I think I can even get the wubba. Yeah, so it looks as though if I wanted to access the secret once the room is cleared, I would still be able to get... Um, oh, I can't get the wubba because then I'm trapped. Never mind, because I have to step fully in here and be able to step back. Yeah, so if you want an extra tool, it's in here. It's not strictly necessary. Yeah, so I think I could just get the gentry eye on its own, bring it around here with enough space, and be able to access the secret with no other monsters in the room. So I don't think it was actually a problem to have uh, cleared the room before accessing the secret. Uh, gentry eye, you want to come with me, please? Thanks. All right, so longer monster chain, I'm hoping will get me access to... Uh, something. Can I get the seep now? If my monsters reorder, which they do, and is it okay? Uh, maybe? Yeah, I think I got away with that. I lost my evil eyes, but I can get them back. Seep is dead now, so that's a benefit. Okay, let's go around again. I also lost my roach, um, so net gain is one monster here. Depending on turn order, that might end up with more of a net gain to my chain length. Um, sword is a very bad direction. Can I fix it? Not especially. No, I kind of can't. I might be able to if I go around another time, though. Um, shoot, now I can't do anything with the gentry eye and it just gets stuck. Okay, well, this looks like a failure condition. Uh, killing all my monsters would not be beneficial. Okay, so let's do this differently. I could send the goblin in first, maybe. I could leave the gentry eye there, but then no, then it gets stuck. Okay, I need more monsters. I want to not kill that roach, I guess. Okay, so Seep stays alive for now. Uh, Roach doesn't, I guess, but, well, then I'm in this state with, uh, evil eyes and everything. Okay, this feels right to me. Somehow it was. Thanks, turn order. I guess the... Yeah, Gentry Eye moves before the goblin, which is why that space opened up. So Gentry Eye tried to go here, but had to slide vertically instead, and its head somehow ended up in the corner there. Neat. Okay. So I can kill the Omplik, that's the hard one to kill. Now all I have to do is keep enough monsters there to kill the Evil Eye and the Seep. Which should be no problem. And we should be good. Let's see, can I get away with going in here now? I suspect so. I think this room is clear now. I don't think there's anything standing in my way. Um... Goblin would be the ideal tool for accessing Seep. So I'm going to kill this evil eye. Uh, right, because ortho squares, I'm safe to do this. Goblin made it in. Uh, okay, goblin's less ideal than I thought. So let's try keeping an evil eye around and see if that works better. So you stayed there. You'll lock the goblin in place. Thanks, ortho squares. Okay, that worked out. Room clear, good stuff. Okay. That's approximately how that room is supposed to go. This went through a few revisions. I don't know, I changed some stuff that was supposed to make it easier, but I think it made it harder instead. Anyway, that one's done. It took a bit. Okay, so, uh, this one. Completely different kind of puzzle. Right, how is this? The water skipper in the middle. Okay, so two rock golems and a water skipper are the things to kill in here. This releases the gentry eye and is positioned in such a way that it's going to eat me if I don't, like, get a little bit of extra distance. Just for fun. Oops. Uh, this pipe here is very important, as we'll see soon. 
Okay, right, so golems are locked in with those four plates, both sides, and a broken wall. So I have to have these stably held down and go in myself. Yeah, okay, so I see exactly what I wanted here. I have another round thing to go around. And the joke here is that there's a water skipper preventing me from comfortably getting close to this whole area. So I have to do this at a little bit of a distance, because yeah, if I get too close then I just get eaten. But the idea is to wrap the gentry I chain in such a way that that happens. Now, golems aren't just for killing. Uh, you'll notice I accessed this east one by the fact that there was an obstacle here. This obstacle here is kind of a proxy for golem rubble. I tried to signpost this very clearly. Hey, you want to put a golem rubble right here. It's very important. So, uh, that's a space where I want to put that. I can let him the rest of the way out again. I can make that easier on myself by doing this. Can I get away with that? I doubt it. No. Okay, so I'll have to reopen one of those doors, which is fine. I have a helper who will help me do that. Which one is that? It's this one, sure. Um, I might be able to do this from where I am. Depends on move order. Gala moves first. That's what I wanted to see, I think, and it didn't do what I expected, but that's okay. We'll do this a different way. Uh, will this work? I don't think so. Okay, let's stash the gentry eye. I think an earlier version of this room didn't have this pipe here, and it was like way more annoying because you had to do a lot more circling around here. The pipe helped just like make everything gentler and make more sense. Uh, I can't kill that rock golem from this arrangement. I need it to come from here, because I'd have to get too close to the water skipper to do it from Gollum being there. Okay, so I do have to do another round. That's fine. We'll do another round. Gollum's in the perfect place now. Gentry is not, but I can fix that, right? Without disrupting the Gollum too much. K kinda? No, not exactly, but... This'll work. This'll work fine. Uh... Uh... This'll work fine. <laughs> improvising. This room involves some improvising. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I think it's pretty clear what you have to do. Okay, so uh, I can come from either direction down south. All I have to do is wrap you around the opposite direction. Exact same set of moves. We'll do it just fine. And we're done. Uh, well, water skipper, sure. That one still exists. Existence ended. There we go. Okay. So, last room of the level. Uh, this one, when I first built it, was kind of meant to be sort of a boss fight room. You got, like, a lot of stuff going on, and it was a lot harder and more complicated than this. This is the easier version, and I think I didn't remove enough elements. It still looks like a big complicated mess, and it's hard to... The one Let's Play that I watched of this hold made it clear to me that it's really hard to see what the central mechanism here is supposed to be. I wish I had cut more out of this room, because there's a cool interaction here that I want to show off that's hidden by, like, just a lot of other stuff going on. The harder version of this will show up later, so we'll get to see what that originally looked like. But yeah, I, I wish I had changed a few things here. Anyway, so right, uh, level clear gate there. Won't open while I'm looking at it, so I'll have to clear this, go away, and come back. That's fine. Uh, fuse. So I have to stand here for a time, blow that up to let me in, and then, right, yeah, so each of these four plates opens one of these doors and closes one of these. So what has to happen is while I'm in here, these plates have to be held, while I cross from south to north, they have to be released. Kill the one evil eye, there's also Omplik and Construct. And I have a Gentry Eye Dispenser here where I can get... Oh, that lets them all out at once. Hmm. I could have done something different so you don't have to get them all at once. Well, anyway, it's a Gentry Eye Dispenser. Maybe goes a little faster than you'd want it to. There are floor spikes here. 
Okay, so there's like a bunch of stuff around this plate. There's an open trapdoor gate here, an ortho square on this one, and nothing on this one. So, uh, the way of thinking here is what can I put on these plates that will be stable for basically an infinite amount of time here? It's not infinite, but it's, you know, long enough to basically be infinite. And then will change its location as you go north. So for this one, the observation is to be that there are a bunch of gentry eye with one chain attached to the back of them and a trapdoor gate here and one trapdoor there. So what you want to do is chain up a gentry eye there. He'll be sitting on this plate as you go in here. This one is for toggling that southernmost door so you don't have to worry about it uh, closing too early here. You wouldn't even, even if, it, even if this plate were connected to this door, it'd be fine because he'd step onto it before it closed. Yeah, then Gentry I would step off, and the corresponding door here would open. Right, yeah, here's another demonstration of uh, door wired under Force Arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the easiest one to see. For this one, there's shallow water, which Gentry I don't traverse. Floor spikes, which I guess, like... Let's see, if you put a keg on floor spikes, it blows up. If you put a mirror on floor spikes, I'm pretty sure the mirror shatters. Let's make sure I'm remembering that right. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, if you put an omplik on it, of course the omplik's gonna die, so the only thing that's going to be a sufficient obstacle there is either another gentry eye, which you probably don't want, because how would you hold that one in place, or a dead construct. So construct will have to die here on these spikes, and hold a gentry eye in place just by terrain. So you have this whole L shape here, cradling a gentry eye there. These four arrows here, their purpose will become clear later. What are the ormites for? Oh, ormites hold the construct in place if you want to leave it alive for a moment there. What are these ormites for? I don't remember. Uh, and then you deal with these two. So like. The actual central mechanism that I want to demonstrate in the room has to do with these two plates. But you gotta go through all this other rigmarole first. Also, uh, this fuse is unprotected. I could totally light it early with the omplik beam. Some version of this room tried to prevent that. I don't remember if that survived in the harder version of it. But if I wanted to remove my initial entry timer and do something with a... Reviving construct. I potentially could by burning the fuse of the omplik beam without having to step there. I do happen to know that's not necessary for clearing the room, though. All right. So, um, my recollection is the most comfortable. Okay, yeah. So once I open the gentry eye dispenser, it's just like open. Like as soon as I go down into this row, they're all going to come out. So I don't want to open that yet until I get the construct out. I could just kill the construct here now, but I think he'll be helpful in uh, doing something first. So the way I like to... Um, yeah, my preferred way of chaining up a... Hey, dude. Uh, chaining up a gentry eye on... Dude. <laughs> Come on now. Let's do it this way then. Uh, my preferred way of chaining up a gentry eye on the trapdoor gate there, is to have the construct push this keg off the trapdoor and drop it for me. I think I'm in a position where that's going to be possible. Making that state change in the room is a little bit intimidating, but I guess it's reasonable to observe that the only thing you really need to go down there for prior to uh, lighting this fuse, or prior to having all the gentry I positioned, is um, getting the construct out. Alright, Gentry Eye chained. So now you hold that while you're there, and release it while you're there. Neat. Oh shoot, he dunked my powder keg. Can I avoid that? Nope! Alright. In that case, let's reposition the mirror so he doesn't dunk it. There we go. I don't know if I have time now. I do, just barely. Okay. So now he steps around, and let's just say your job might be done at this point. You, come hang out with me there. Okay. 
And floor spikes go on a multiple of 30. 30 is a multiple of 10. They go in all 10s. Uh, so this construct will be kept dead forever there. Uh, so now I can put a gentry eye here. But then once I go north of this north of this row, that one will get out. So like the position of that will look like uh, I'd rather have its chain like that. There we go. Yeah, so you're stable right up until I walk up there. So I'd like to not do that yet. So that's going to be a later one. Um, so now you just got to figure out what to do with remaining room elements to get the rest of these stuck. So like the the main thing I wanted to demonstrate was sort of difference between these two. The ortho square on this and the nothing here. So I'll just go ahead and make the formation that I want to make here, since I, I have it in my head already and there's no, like, figuring out what I want involved. There's a few variations you can do on this. Um, but in some order, these elements need to be present. So you have the Omplik, the Keg, and the Mirror forming... Oh boy. Uh... A usable barrier here. And what I've done is I've made it so that a... Oh boy, let's see. Will this work? Um, it might. I think it will. So I've made it such that that's stable. I can go down here, but when I go up north far enough, uh, that plate releases. Uh, conveniently, my sword blocks this beam and holds the omplic in place while I do this operation. So ortho square is the same way with one obstacle fewer. I don't need the extra one here. These could be one further south if you wanted. Uh, they work fine there, though. Anyway, yeah. So that's what holds that in place. And then I just kind of fill in the gentry eye. And things work themselves out. So you stay stable because I don't have to go... Uh, you stay stable because I don't have to go north of this row. You stay stable for the same reason. Uh, and also, I guess I'll have to not go east of this column anymore. Then the last one goes into place the exact same way. And its chain holds that down. And there we go. I think it's a cool room. It's so hard with a room like this to figure out, though, like, what's it going to feel like to arrive at those conclusions as opposed to just already having them in mind when I build it. And the way... So these force arrows are to uh, to make it easier to trap the gentry eye so they're not in my way so much as I'm leaving. Um, oh, yeah, and they trap them perfectly. Cool. I don't always manage that. I remember having to do cleanup in this room with one or two loose gentry eye but it is enough to trap them all. Anyway, yeah, so um, having, being how specific like these patterns are, uh, I can't just erase those from my mind and try uh, doing this room um, to determine the conclusions myself. Like I'll remember these probably for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, maybe not, but probably. Um, they're very memorable. Uh, but yeah, at some point I should talk about one of the processes I use for trying to put myself into the mindset of a player just observing a room and determining what can be done with it, uh, even if I'm the one who has built that room. So yeah, I'll find some room to talk about that at some point. Alright, so that's a level clear, and I'll see you next time to go down these stairs and see the third level.